Buon, buon pomeriggio, benvenuti allo Schermo dell'Arte. Questo è il secondo incontro che facciamo tra un artista e un curatore dell'artista presente nel programma dello Schermo dell'Arte. E questo pomeriggio avremo con noi, abbiamo con noi Ivan Argote, please, thank you, che converserà con Riccardo Venturi. Ivan Ergoten is a Colombian artist and film director. In his interventions, interventions pardon, on monuments, uh, large-scale installations and performance proposes new symbolic uses of public space. And he's currently uh, resident at the Academia, Académie de France uh, Villa Medici, uh, Rome. Uh, recently, solo show include uh, Galeri Pe Perotin and Art, Art Base uh, San Antonio, Texas in 2021, um, uh, ASU Art Museum Arizona in 2019, and MALBA Buenos Aires 2018. He has also participated in uh, many group exhibitions, biennials, and film festivals such as uh, Global Resistance at uh, Centre Pompidou du pa a Parigi, Paris, uh, Poeticas de la Emotion a la Caixa Forum uh, Barcelona, The Street Where the World is Made at Maxi in uh, Roma, uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Baiana. Um, also, his, his work is included in permanent collections of uh, many uh, public uh, institutions such as uh, the Guggenheim Museum in New York, Saint Pompidou in Paris, Cadiz San Francisco, and Macba Barcelona. Ricardo is uh, Rome, from Rome, art historian and critic, and uh, he has been living in, in France, in Paris, uh, since 2002. Um, he holds a PhD at the University of uh, Paris West and Antaire la Defense, and he has been postdoc doctoral fellow at Phillips Collection Center for the Study of Modern Art and George Washington University. From 2012 until 2016, he has been pensionnaire uh, at the Insti Institut National d'Histoire de l'Art in Paris. And in 2018 uh, and 2019, he also has been resident at the Académie de France Villa Medici in Rome. He, is a, he has published many books, among which Mark Rothko, Lo Spazio e la Sua Disciplina Electa 2007, uh, 2007 pardon, a Black Paintings Eclipse sul Modernismo 2008, uh, Always for Electa, and Passione dell'Indifferenza, Francesco Lo Savio 2018, Humboldt uh, Books, and this is a book that I love very much, especially because together with, <laughs> with Ricardo, we have co-curated an ex exhibition, retrospective exhibition on Lo Savio at Mart Museum in 2018. Um, he also is contributor for Art Forum, alias, Doppio Zero, and Antinomie, who also uh, he contributed to fund. So, it's your turn. Thank you very much for, for this uh, talk. We are looking thank forward to see. I thank you, uh, Silvia, for having us here. I thank you uh, for coming here on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside, so I'm very glad to have this conversation with Ivan. We met a couple of times in Rome uh, near Piazza di Spagna, so it was a nice uh, uh, kickoff for um, our conversation. So I guess that many of you yesterday were here. I saw some fa familiar faces. Uh, so um, we probably go um, back to uh, adieu, no, au revoir, Joseph Gallini, uh, before doing what we, uh, what I uh, think as a kind of genealogy to, to, to actually understand where this um, uh, video comes from and, um, and at which point, uh, in which point of his career, of Ivan's career, he came to Paris from Bogota. So I will actually give a, li a little feedback so that then I let you mm, maybe explain that yesterday there was, there was already a talk about, I guess, the many issues that are, um, that are mm. at stake here. Um, well, as the 
title is, is French, maybe um, just, uh, it's not actually a, just a linguistic issue, but uh, there's a kind of shift between au revoir et adieu. And in English, they probably, it's not so clear because you can both translate as bye-bye. Uh, but actually, I guess that adieu, it's more like a farewell, like a definitive, you know, mm -hmm. like goodbye, n n we don't see anymore. We never seen it. And actually, uh, au revoir, uh, it means that, as this film is an anticipation film, mm. uh, it implies that you, and, and this uh, moustache, uh, monsieur, uh, <laughs> which is on the <laughs> pedestal, we probably meet you again. So I guess in the title already, there is an element that in the monument affair, there, has, there is actually an openness. I mean, the, the, the issue is still, um, it's, it's uh, vivid, and, and, the, and, the, um, and there is not actually a black or white uh, answer to mm. um, what you're showing. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the topography of, of Paris, so this is a second element, like, you know. mm -hmm. uh, so the seventh arrondissement, uh, the seventh district, you see uh, the, the Eiffel Towers, but there is also the Napoleon tomb, which is actually not far, uh, which is actually in front of the Gallieni uh, statue. There is the Ecole Militaire uh, that we mentioned yesterday. It's the place where many politicians live. So, uh, live. so there is a lot of guards. Uh, does, I mean, I, I, tell, I insist on this point because it's even more striking that without any permission you could uh, do something like that, like go there with a crane and almost, almost uh, debunking, debunking the, the uh, statue. Um, the statue was already targeted uh, the previous year and um, by anti-racist militants that wrote uh, De Boulonnant les récits officiels which I can translate with let's debunk the official story, but uh, the, the boulonnet is such a nice word in French because we were saying also yesterday that it, it is kind of uh, sboudellare. I mean, there is something of the boudella, I mean, of the intestine, you know, there's something of eviscerate, much more physical than just a, a lift up of this um, piece of uh, bronze, is bronze or whatever material mm -hmm. it, it is, is made of. Um, Another element is this role that you give to the no human um, element. So the protagonist, well, it's you that uh, you're actually one of those um, workers, but uh, the crane is, it's, I mean, the presence of the crane yeah. is it's very uh, vivid as much as the statue that it is flying. In a moment, we see this uh, uh, 3D reconstruction when it's actually no more on its pedestals, but flying. Uh, flying like a bird. And maybe the last, the, the very last comments is this moment when you, uh, it's like if you're like hagging this statue, yeah. and it would be the first hag, hag that, that this statue have, you know, because it was there lonely for <laughs> 70 years, I guess. And so at the same time, it's a hanging, but also it's a hug. I mean, uh, and I guess you do that on, on purpose, maybe with mm. this scene when you take him from from mm, from the back. There so there is is also, I I made this series of paintings of other st sculptures that I imagine getting removed, attached, and I call them um, bondage, because I think it's also sort of erotic act with this uh, male figures, stiff male figures, and to attach, attach them, move them back, move them forward, like push them up, push them up. That's it. <laughs> do, you, do, do, do you want to, do, um, mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe give a, any more context to the uh, video? Yeah, or? so what we discussed with Roberto was also, because we saw already this video and we had a discussion about it, uh, maybe to show some kind of background, um, other works and how come I end up doing this. So I'm a Scorpio, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, we're going to show briefly some works from the 2006, 7, 8, which was the days by when I arrived to Paris. Somehow the selection of works we made are related from one side with this kind of city of Paris, and then at the end more with like, uh, goes to the monument and then goes to maybe some, uh, some reflection which is more present that it's about kind of also nature and so this is a video early, actually it's 2006, I made a mistake, but um, it's called Making Off, and I'll show it. It's very short. Yeah. 
Oui. Action Très bien. Continuez comme ça. Très, très bien. Continuez comme ça, s'il vous plaît. Continuez comme ça. Voilà. Génial. Voilà. Et... Attendez, attendez, et... Coupez C'est très bien, merci. Excusez-moi. So many actors in that... <laughs> Some way. <laughs> Um, the, the element that we see here, and they will be back in uh, Au Revoir Gallieni, is the fact that you, of course, you don't ask any permission. I mean, there is mm -hmm. several of these early videos that you do in uh, Paris, where, I mean, you just like turn on the camera, and there is any um, uh, idea of um, actors or or preparing a scenario. I mean, you just. Um, you, I, I know that you're talking about art bashing. You know, this, uh, I think it's a, it's a nice idea. They mm. just um, mm. you mentioned just before when we started here, like two minutes ago, this idea of Siga Verto, of the men with the camera and someone moving with the camera. And I was very into that at that time and thinking about like also the early cinema as like an action in public space, like someone with a camera doing something and kind of affecting our reality. So it's pretty much what happens in this video. It's pretty much what happens in the last video of Galieni. It's a sort of filming that it's become uh, kind of an intervention in itself. Maybe on the cinema we can say a couple, I mean, on, on the back, your background, we can uh, say a couple of words because before, so just before moving to Paris, you study in uh, Columbia graphic design and, and so much as cinema, I mean, so it's some, some interesting background. And, and Ziga Vertov was part of your, I don't know if it was mm -hmm. your, one of your heroes, but I figured that you were. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And then you moved to uh, contemporary art, or maybe it was already I there. Discover, uh, I discovered art by actually video, it's history of video art. I had a teacher in Colombia, a French guy actually, Guillaume, uh, I forgot his name. Um, it was his family name. And uh, he made us our class. He was an uh, interesting kind of artist and teacher. He had a, we had a history of video with him, a uh, class. And I discovered many like early videos, experimental videos from Paul Voxtel or uh, um, Ant Farm. Or, uh, and he had many originals. That was a crazy thing. Uh, and then also I remember discovering like with Peter Campus, but then also Dan Graham was very important also from different reasons also because he was working with text, he was doing these installations with video about time and at the time I was very kind of into that. Um, so that was kind of the open window. I saw this practice of him, sometimes I didn't understand well like these photographies in the suburbs and these poems and then this, and I didn't have the background to understand well. But it was a good entrance to that. Then in Colombia, it's kind of also different because the context is changing. So I, I come from a more political, let's say, background. So mixed to that, kind of, it, yeah, it's pretty much <laughs> like what influenced me. I think that we we should stress this political uh, background because um, part of your art is a uh, activist art. I mean, what today we mm, hmm? we we see as a form of activism. Hmm? Well, maybe in the, the next video in Rebank it would be more, um, but but before maybe, we, uh, yeah, I would like to say, uh, mm, if, I mean, if you can just say uh, like a, a couple of words on what you were doing in, uh, I mean, the fact that is, uh, you are, you are mm, um, that your family, I mean, it's a, it's a family mm -hmm. affair. I mean, it seems, seems yeah, to see yeah, yeah. that your father and your mother were, are still much involved in uh, left wing movements. Yeah. And that you were part of this uh, movement, where you were like going with them, and also like collaborate before mm -hmm. uh, moving to Paris. And I think that this is uh, 
um, a thread that, that we can see also in the, especially in retouch and in early videos, but this political side makes mm. part of what you are today, mm. yes. Yeah, I, so I grew up, my parents, back before I was born, she, they were in kind of revolutionary groups in Colombia, and a guerrilla. And then when I, in the 80s, when I was born, they were more into like unions. They were teachers at schools, in primary schools. And then they, in the 90s, they worked more in the, they created their, with their colleagues, their first kind of group, like parties, of left parties, because in Colombia before the 90s, it was only two parties, like in the US. In the 90s, ch constitution changed, and then new parties were allowed to, to create it. And then so is they still work on that. And then I kind of grew up, so all my life in unions, protests, uh, like my first job was like at six or seven years old, like uh, giving flyers or uh, I got paid for that. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, and then I was more uh, like attracted to images and to arts and and they were, I mean, of course, uh, supportive of that. And kind of when I moved to Paris, it was a bit uh, strange feeling because I was kind of running away of, I was not working anymore with them and support, like in the, or like doing the political work uh, because I always was there in the meetings, giving the drinks or making the posters or uh, helping with something. And somehow then I was not anymore there and I was kind of doing my own thing. And at the beginning it was strange, but then, Kind of, I did also my own practice, like I do my own political practice, that as, like with the works, but with the uh, workshops I do with children or uh, with uh, different activities. So, I guess it's a continuation of so of, of their work in a way. Let me show this one. Yeah. So I stayed two years in jail for this. No, <laughs> <laughs> because as many, there's, I mean, many of these videos are on YouTube, and we will probably go back to that. Uh, that are on YouTube, and the comments are. Not, I mean, you can still leave a comment. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and these comments are part. I mean, you care a lot about about the comments that people uh, leave. Also on on Au Revoir Gallini, uh, there is this idea that that the comments are part of the work. So you can, s s this video, are much of them yeah. are available. Yeah, so I made this in 2008 uh, for the Open do open Studios at the Beaux-Arts in Fine Arts School. And I had this strange relationship with museums. I didn't understand why I had to learn in Colombia the history of art I learned, like Western history of art. And so I, when I arrived to Paris, I was uh, in a contradiction because I kind of admired these words. And at the same time, I was like, like what, how are you related with me? So I created this small fiction of 12 seconds when someone gets super pissed at modern art and make this kind of curvy line on top of these straight lines. And I showed it in, in, the, uh, in the school for the open studios and generate a kind of uh, situation with the director, many teachers and students got mad at me like, hmm. And um, yeah, even they got maybe comments uh, a bit strange, such as like, Ivan, you know, in France, you, you don't do these kind of things as, as if I, I was like a Mugli or Tarzan. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I end up, like the video is called Retouch, and actually I did the gesture with, I went to the museum with a spray can. I, I, I spent months kind of planning it, uh, like looking for the right works, there were both frame. And I did the gesture with the spray can, but I never painted because I work in the advertising before in the product post-production, so I add the painting in post-production. And uh, so it was also a kind of a trick, not far away also from the Gallieni film. And I also took this video at the beginning for YouTube because YouTube was kind of this new platform. Um, and and the, yeah, the comments were very, they're very, not, they're funny, they're like the insults, like fuck you, you do, or like dude, respect, or uh, some people even like make fun of the way I run. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of an interesting moment. Also in make, in Paris, it got I got a lot of visibility because of this video, because then it was in another show, like group show. It was, the thing is like, if nobody asked me, they assume it's true. So in the Le Monde, uh, they, was, they wrote an article about it and then they say like, so this guy went there in the Pompidou and made this vandalism. We called the museum, they say nothing happened, but 
uh, but they never ask me, so if they don't ask me, they assume it's true. And then, actually, I think some some museums have shown this work, thinking that it's uh, real. I know some, <laughs> but because they never they borrow it somewhere and then. But it was also about this, like like the Gallieni film about this also this thing that you believe so much in images and uh, you kind of trust the images. You prefer to believe in the image and. When, the, for example, in this case, with the city decided to go send someone to take a picture to see if the statue was still there, they published an image, and they proved with an image that the statue was not stolen. So um, I like this also. It's another kind of meta-reflection on images. Um, just to give a little bit more of context, I guess that um, you told me about the deception that you had when you moved from, I mean, that you were studying art history on this black and white uh, photocopy of Gombrich or whatever <laughs> in Colombia. You didn't, you never see this work in the flesh, uh, as you say. So when you moved to Paris, in a sense, you were happy that you could enter in, into these temples of masterpieces of European modernism or whatever. And at the same time, you were kind of, uh, I don't know, say, well, the, at the end, this painting were like yeah, a, a piece, a piece of, of, yeah, a piece of fabric with a pinch of wood with Stand. nails and it looks very uh, like a table, like an object, <laughs> like a There were no more icon. Yeah, they sort of like desacralized, desacralized in a way. So this, this virtual desacralization is probably part of this also deception that you had moving. Mm, yeah. And right. say, I mean, yeah. So, and then by those days I was, like my practice was pretty much doing this kind of actions, most of them recorded with video, so that's also why we placed this one here. Um, and uh, they had to do with the fact that I was kind of a foreign in a place where I didn't know anybody, like a kind of alone person, which I didn't live in a bad way. I was kind of very happy to be alone uh, <laughs> because and nobody nobody knew me. Nobody. Yeah, and that's what is nice of Paris. Nobody, yeah. And also there was no one there to remind me who I was. So yeah. actually it made a lot of stories made up. I, I used to say, sometimes when I was in a party, I used to say I'm a professional, I was a professional salsa dancer. <laughs> it's like, how come you end up in Paris? You know, I won a scholarship because I'm a, dance, a salsa dancer. And I dance salsa because all Colombians do, so <laughs> I can prove it. <laughs> and so I play a lot with myself, and then these kind of videos are part of that. <laughs> En fait, euh, euh, aujourd'hui, c'est mon anniversaire. Et euh, je suis tout nouveau à Paris, donc je n'ai pas beaucoup d'amis. J'aimerais que, que vous chantez pour moi le joyeux anniversaire pour garder un bon, un bon souvenir. Est-ce que c'est possible Non. Ah, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Alors, un, je vais juste enregistrer. Un, un, quoi deux, un, deux. Vos prénoms. Ivan. Ivan. Ok. Alors, un, deux, trois. Joyeux anniversaire Ivan Joyeux anniversaire Ivan Joyeux anniversaire Ivan Joyeux anniversaire Bravo Merci beaucoup Voilà <laughs> uh, maybe for the records, can I can I say that it was not your birthday? It was not. Okay. It was actually last Monday my birthday. So in case you have, <laughs> we have something to celebrate this week. Yeah, no, it is eighth of November. I'm a Scorpio. I told at the beginning, I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> See. <laughs> no, but I had like to make sure I I that's the subway stop where I used to live, Abes, and they have this big elevator because it's very deep in the ground. And I always share this moment, this kind of moment with this small community in the elevator when everybody's looking at the ceiling and then like trying to avoid each other and like trying to make this kind of the world doesn't exist and avoid contact physically and uh, and that's a kind of a subject also in my work in general, like how we conceive the other and why we consider it different and why we are kind of also afraid. Um, so I wanted to create a something, a situation, and then I was like maybe singing something and then for months and for months and I was thinking about it. And then I come up with the idea that maybe to make this party, this birthday celebration. Um, but then I think it was by my birthday, it was November, and it's, it was sad, uh, it was rainy and gray. So I wait, I wait, I wait during the whole winter. And then in March, 
when I, there was this sunny day, I remember, and I was like, yeah, this is the day because I, I, I need, I mean, I need to have the people a lit, in, not in November mood, but in more like a spring mood. So I went there and I, I, did, oh, I always did these actions only once um, because I don't like to repeat or uh, if it works, it works, and then it worked. And it's interesting that there was less cell phone because in, uh, today in the same scene, people will probably look at their screens. Yeah, no. true. No, so it was you no get the attention right away. It was no, I mean, that was like a camera. There were no like, phones with cameras. Mm. I'm that old. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice uh, here, as in the previous video, I know. Is, sorry, sorry. Um, I like the time frame because, you know, for, so when you're um, in the first video, um, in the making of, you take actually the time frame is a metro stop. Yeah. And here, the time frame is actually the time the that elevator, you go from. Yeah. Down, yeah. So uh, it's a time uh, contraint, but at the yeah. same time, you know, so, um, and the people cannot escape. Yeah, I know, they're trapped. Sense, yeah. They're trapped. Yeah. I did that, uh, there's this other video, it's called Altruism. I, we didn't include it here because uh, then we have to talk about other issues. But it's also in between two stops, and I basically leak heavily a pole bar, a subway pole bar. And it's this idea of, the way I said before, not being afraid of the other. No? Why are we disgusted by the subway bar? Because we think the other is maybe dirtier than us. Or, uh, but uh, at the same time, we could ask, like I was saying just before, like some people go in churches and touch the feet or kiss a statue or nobody's disgusted about it. And then I was like, maybe the bar is this holy and like object because, and it got this, all this energy because everybody touches. So I kind of show my love to the bar and then lick it as, well, as, as hard as I can. Yeah. So you make of the bar a monument, in a sense? Sort of, yeah, no, like a precious thing, yeah. Mm. Um, and so um, we're going to go back to the monument issue, so... And back to Colombia. So. That's in Colombia, so... Um, so uh, most of these works in, in the back, in the past, in the present, and in the future are about the public space or are in public space and happen in the public space. So, and then this monument thing was uh, something that was with me since I was a teenager. I used to climb up monuments uh, drunk <laughs> or uh, with my friends and do like for some time finish parties at 3, 4 a.m. in some like monument hidden. It, would, it was something. And then their presence was always kind of very like a sound, always good, like, like a noise. So why are these things here? Why we live with this? Uh, why we'd have to see this thing, who decide who make it. So there was always like a thing. I was invited in, as a funny thing, in 2009 I was living in France, but I was in, like, invited as, a, as an artist, a for, as a, a, in residency in Colombia, as a foreign artist. <laughs> um, I, what's happening? Ah, wait. Wait. No. Because we have, oh. Ah, there you go. Okay. It's black. Mm, ah, Ali. Can we play outside the, of the power like that? Yeah, maybe like this. Hmm. So this is just a uh, documentation of an action I made uh, in, as part of that residency. I found this statue of Simon Bolivar. In th that's in the arts faculty, actually, where I studied graphic design. I found it. I knew the faculty, so I knew it was there. And I stole it. I have a funky T-shirt. <laughs> um, and uh, I wanted to make a collage, like a public monument collage. So mixed a fountain with a statue, and then kind of it becomes this. Uh, I don't know if I can move on. Well, whatever. Uh, so I just basically put the statue inside the <laughs> inside the fountain. Um, also, the image of Simon Bolivar is used in in South America by the left, by the right, by the guerrillas, by the paramilitaries. So it's like an image that everybody used and everybody kind of claimed to be the 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 to follow the heritage of the Simon Bolivar who liberates like Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, and Panama, and, and Bolivia. Uh, and I like this idea of the statue that was kind of drawn. It was floating and that was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, and then what the funny thing also is I installed it there. I was doing my residency there. This is the university. You can see there is many graffitis, political graffitis around. Um, and then as soon as I install it, nobody just said anything and everybody started like saying like, oh, I never realized it was a statue in that fountain. And they considered it was like that, so they, no one removed it. And then, so it just dissolved because it's plaster. Maybe they thought that there was water coming outside of his mouth, I don't know. <laughs> no, like yeah, phone. yeah. No, people were like, I remember, we, because I spent there sometimes having lunch and people said like, ah, I never noticed there was a, a statue in the middle. Many riots actually happen in this spot. Uh, this is the spot. All these pavés, uh, all this pavement is, is because the entrance, that entrance. And there's a certain point when you can also read the tag on the wall, I guess. Yeah, if hunger is low, rebellion is justice. Mm, it's a common graffiti. In. Mm. It's very nice to see that's my faculty. <laughs> mm. And here it means maybe it's the first attempt to mix uh, to uh, with the idea of monuments and uh, natural element. Mm. That's why. Yeah, which was not very conscious at mm. the time on my side. And also this reflection mm -hmm. even, I was not also very conscious about that. Mm. And then what's his surprise? La Estrategia. So we're still, oh. we're still in Colombia. So you, you were moving back f to, from yeah. Paris. Uh, yeah. but, when you, but coming back to Colombia as a foreign artist also, that, that is quite striking. So, um, yeah, so in La Estrategia was already 2012, so more than six years in Paris. So it was a little bit, I finished school, I was already kind of working, and those, that was kind of my biggest, first big project, my first show, I, was a sh I made a solo show in Palais de Tokyo. Mm. Um, I won a prize with that named Sam Art Project, which uh, like, like gave me the, um, the funds to make uh, this project possible. And it was also the first, until then I was doing small actions with interventions, either in video, either no video, uh, sometimes photographs, but it was always these kind of small things. And uh, with La Estrategia, I wanted to, uh, it, was, it was a more complex project because it's about, I told you my parents were revolutionary, so in the 70s they used to live in like these communities, these revolutionary communities. Um, and they uh, have they they share with me many anecdotes from those days uh, of how they lived and they live in the very special conditions. They change their names. Sometimes they try to avoid visual contact with others to don't in case they were taken by the state because the the state at the time um, um, Turbay is the president at the time. He made that this uh, when they were disappearing and killing opposants. Um, uh, Estado de seguridad, something like that. And uh, so they were in danger, mm, and they lived in this, they trained themselves with, with guns, they trained them physically, like intellectually, but they also forced themselves, for example, they couldn't dance because it was too bourgeois to dance. They, they were very kind of strict with themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to make a documentary, I wanted to make the archives they never made of this time, because they were not doing images at the time, it was dangerous <laughs> to, be a, to be in a photo. Um, so I, in La Estrategia, I wanted, I hired this group of actors who uh, do improvisation, and we lived for two weeks in the same conditions they used to live, and I was doing a kind of documentary about that. So it was, uh, yeah, like sort of a reality show. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so we followed this group of people, and, but at the same time, I used this group of people because my parents, they share many stories with me, but they don't, they, some they didn't because of security reasons also. So I, there's something, some things they did I don't know and I don't want to. Um, or maybe they want to, I don't think, I mean, anyways. Um, did they know that you were doing live strategy? Oh yeah, 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 they helped me a lot. And they helped me a lot with the stories, they met the crew and then they were around in the, so I decided to, since there was some gap, some spaces I didn't know, I decided to create my own interventions, but that were performed by this group of actors. So at the same time I was doing a shooting a film, a sort of documentary, but it was a fiction. And this fiction allowed me also to make these interventions in real interventions in public space. So I, I made some excerpts here. Um, so for instance, this is a statue of Francisco de Orellana, who is a, a conquistador, Spanish conquistador, who supposedly in history is the one who discovered the Amazonian rainforest. Uh, just by himself. So he, he arrived and then he, he discovered it. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, there was like people living there for thousands of years. And then in Bogota, there is this statue that is Colombia honors Francisco Orellana, discoverer of the Amazon. He actually gave the name to the Amazon because he thought it was Amazon women. He was looking for Amazon women. So he was like, they must live here. Um, and then, so I decided to, I, I think it's obsolete, this monument, first of all, because there's no monuments around about the indigenous communities who lived, uh, who lived before and who still live in the Amazon in Bogota. So they have only the only monument related to the Amazon is this monument. So I decided to cover it with mirrors and to make it kind of disappear, uh, to make disappear the image with this kind of mirage. Uh, and the end also it was a kind of beautiful revenge because nature ended up like eating back his image. Uh, And then here, so what happens is that the police at the end, uh, they, yeah, they, they so really the, came. The, the police arrived, yeah. Um, and they say, what are you doing? I mean, what's happening? Yeah, but mm -hmm. each, I mean, monuments were not such a hot issue at the time, mm -hmm. uh, 2011. And um, so, and I had this, I managed to make this letter from the city hall that says like, Ivan Argote is doing, shoot, he's shooting a film in public squares. And it was very fuzzy, didn't say anything about nothing. So I was, since I had cameras and tripods, I was like, when they arrived, I um, was very calm and then like, what you're doing? And I was like, no, we're just doing this shooting. Uh, look, do you have a letter? And they were like, okay, fine. Then they just leave and then let us just continue. Um, but then they ask you to bring the mirrors. Yeah, I have to ask me to, to put them back out. And I was like, it's too dangerous because so I have to break them, uh, to break them. So I, that's why I made this scene when they get broken. So it's like if, um, so before you were using water and here you're using mirror. Maybe. Yeah. Also and mirror is a hidden, it's, there's a meta sense because there is this myth that the Spanish exchanged gold with the indigenous people for mirrors. So mm. they trick them, they're like, ah, oh, look, I have this mirror, uh, look how beautiful it is, you, can I change it for your gold? And then we're like, sure. Uh, so that's a myth, uh, but uh, kind of, yeah, they, it's a, it's a, it's a thing you, you, it's commonly known, they say, in, in Colombia. So there was not a, because my reading, I didn't know that uh, detail of the mirror image, which I mm. find quite interesting. I was more thinking about the, the idea of digitalizing uh, the monument, I mm. mean, like to yeah. change like the relationship between uh, um, the vegetable world mm. and the monument um, in the sense that we used to bring flowers to monuments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here what you do is actually to, I mean, the monument is reflecting the landscape mm. all of a sudden. Also, I call it etc. I mean, I made a picture out of that and then I action, I call it etc. So when I was in 17, 18, 19, I made this group named Etceterist Movement with some friends we, with whom we actually climbed the monuments and did many other actions, such as, for example, singing in the bus punk songs and giving money to the people because the punks, the songs went horrible. And so it was like, sorry for the song, but here's a coin. Um, and no one took the money, right? No, then no? in that uh, time we were more aggressive. We put the coins on the oh. legs of the people. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then this idea of cetera is like et cetera means everything else that is not mentioned. And with this idea of the mirror is like everything that else that is not him, uh, that mm -hmm. is not this Francisco Arellano. So why don't we make a monument about ourselves, about the city, about the people and about the nature instead of have, still having this guy up there? Because yeah, they get completely disappeared and we have a kind of vegetal revenge. Mm. And then here is this in this other excerpt, also during the same film, uh, it's um, an, an, a more animal revenge because, so we went to, uh, also in those days, it was the first time I was doing this poncho action where I placed ponchos on top of Spanish kings or queens uh, or Christopher Columbus. And then we went to uh, a monument in Bogota of Isabel la Católica and I found there was bees. And the, the statue was colonized by bees. So the statue of the queen a, has already a, a, a queen bee inside, and it was already colonized when we arrived, um, which made it super dangerous to make the poncho action. <laughs> mm. 
And then also this monument, it was removed, I guess, three months ago in Colombia after the protest that uh, took place this year. But this monument is so aggressive too because it's the first monument you see when you enter, you arrive to the city. It's the first monument you see when you come from the airport. It's the fear, and it's called the Monument to Spanish Kings. And it's actually the Queen and Christopher Columbus. He's not uh, a Spanish king, but. So here is like a colonial king being colonized by a bee colony, <laughs> right? I mean, it's the yeah. animal that. And then, and now like uh, they're removed. And so also oh. like these pedestals are now empty. And actually was some indigenous community who claimed to do that. And then this, the city was afraid they just destroyed the statues. So they decided to take them off. And now they're like in some corner. Mm. The pedestal is still The pedestal is still there. And even the story of the statues was they made it, I mean, they made it like 100 years ago to celebrate the 400 years of the conquista. And then they didn't have the money to make the plinth, so they were in stock for many years. So they, after they come, they place them in another neighborhood. They were replaced many times, and Christopher Columbus is supposed to point the west, but then they forgot about that, and then he's pointing the south. Uh, so it's all kind of bullshit. <laughs> Maybe, uh, I mean, it's a the, the good moment to discuss uh, this, I mean, the monuments issue, because uh, in general we have the tendency of having, <coughs> sorry, a black or white uh, um, divide. Right, I mean, there's those who say, okay, have all, all, the, all the monuments should be kept on place, mm -hmm. and you work a lot on heritage. I mean, already retouch is a work on yeah. heritage that in French is patrimoine, so there is, uh, as in Italian, so there is the father as well. Yeah, patrimony is is comes from the father, no? With the heritage from the father. And then matrimony, patrimony is from the father. Matrimony, which is marriage in languages like such as Spanish or English, Italian, when you inherit Italian. from mother, which is very weird too. Yeah. So yeah, so, so is that one of your, um, I mean, early, early um, uh, topics, the, the idea of, mm. of the heritage, the patrimoine, what, what, what you can do with the patrimoine. So there is those who just like defend patrimoine, I mean, you should like do anything with, with patrimoine, and others that uh, will like uh, be mm, happy to debunk um, mm. all the statues. And I guess that what we saw yesterday in Au Revoir Gallieni, and even what you are showing here, is like showing that there is a, um, uh, uh, a way in the middle, which is actually fiction. You know how how ki we can use fiction, mm. and, and how fiction can use to uh, open up a uh, uh, public debate. Yeah. But you using uh, like fiction in a, in a in very I mean it's like a metamorphic. Uh, mm. It's something that is not black or white. You know, and then every time you are using in a different way. So sometimes mm. it's like the water, or like the, there is the mirror, uh, or uh, the three D debunking of the movement, mm. uh, the removal, um, or the poncho as here. I have I have different views on that because like I personally don't I, I'm not no one to say what to do with these things, but. Um, like personally, some I think this should be removed, like Galliani. But I, in general, I think we need to make a, ref a reflection for every specific case. And also, in general, I think is why do we have to? I mean, in general, not only related to monument, but it's, it's like we 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 get born, we're born. Nobody has to be born. It's like yeah, welcome to the world. And then you have to carry with you a bunch of things that already pre-exist. And most of the times, you don't have the right to say anything about it. And if you're a little bit critical about it, it's like, hmm, but why do you want to change? It's that way. Um, and it's like, well, because, I mean, somebody just made it up also. And it's like, the statues are there because some, it was not like a community who decided like, yeah, you know, out of this reflection, I think we should place a statue of this king. This is uh, Charles III and this is in Los Angeles. So I think we deserve in the little time we live in this planet uh, to have at least the right to answer back, to propose another thing, and not only to just carry on the thing that we're supposed to just watch and then pass by. And so I, I guess it, it would be uh, at least fair to be able to say something and not just to contemplate and say like, yeah, I understand why it is, why it is this way, but, and that's it. I have mm -hmm. to just after that, 
close my mouth? I guess it's close to uh, what uh, also Francoise Vergès uh, yeah, uh, think probably. about it. Because so it's the wo women, the feminist and post-colonial scholar that you saw yesterday at the end of the uh, of the video. That she's saying that instead of just asking why we should remove a statue, asking in the first place why it was there, was, was there, yeah, was put there. in the first place. Then ah yeah, that's a picture of the that's the when the cops arrived, mm. but they were nice for once. Then we have this switch in the conversation, two, two, two. Point of view. Ah, <laughs> now you're crazy, like, what's going on? But <laughs> <laughs> well, there's still a pedestal. Yeah, yeah, for people. There's no monuments. Yeah, there are people. Or <laughs> well, the landscape is the monument. Yeah, or the, and the people themselves, they're elevated the, in a way. Um, and then this is a project in Coachella, in, this, in the desert, in the Coachella Valley, near North Shore, we're talking about North Shore. Uh, in California? In California, yeah. And it's in front of this lake, it's named the Salton Sea, um, which is a lake that is kind of disappearing. Uh, so I either do these interventions, but I also do a lot of public um, um, sculpture and installations. Some permanent, some ephemeral. These were like ephemeral, they disappeared after a while. Now there is a hemp field there. Mm. They, they plant marijuana there. Um, and then this, this, well, these steps, it was this idea, it's called a point of view, and this idea was to make a, a site, a kind of, there were five of those, and there was more like a r ritual site where you can have like an elevation on the landscape and see the kind of, and, and there was these reflections, uh, either poems or just reflections in Spanish and English. So you read, and then at the end, you kind of are in this contemplation mood. And um, you, you, use a, you use a staircase also in uh, closed spaces as in the yeah. exhibition in uh, Arizona or... In Texas, in yeah, Texas. in Texas. I can show you maybe a little bit of that. Uh, maybe it's the Gumo, yeah. Just quickly. Uh, uh, it was July 8, I remember, because I didn't have the time to place it here, but I remember it was July 8. It was 2021? It was, yes, it was this year, this summer. Uh, I was working about... I didn't want to, but I, I ended up working about <laughs> a monument of Christopher Columbus that was... No, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm Christopher Columbus. That was you, removed. You as a monument. Yeah. Okay. No, so I made this. I made. I proposed the city to make uh, these stairs to replace. Now they they removed this monument a year ago, and uh, <laughs> with a dog. Uh, <laughs> but then I proposed them to install these these steps and then to make a available to, pe to people to replace the statue of Columbus so everybody in the neighborhood could use it as a, to take their pictures or to say a speech or, um, and um, they say yes, but one week before we installed it, they say they were afraid of the controversy and then they kind of panicked and then they didn't allow me to do it. So I did it, I did a barbecue in the art space where I was working with. Uh, and I invite people from the neighborhood um, to enjoy the barbecue, and then I make this reproduction of the monument on like scale one, and I use it as the one, you know, the things you place the, your head on the back. And also we made a small workshop with kids when they imagine like new monuments. Uh, they were very funny, the, these ones here with the Martians or... Uh, so kind of opening up the question to others, you know, it's not like, yeah, not, not finding a solution, but like, yeah, sharing this idea. And then I think most of this are more interesting than what it is right now. Like, look at this monument. It's like zombie, like a paint paintball, <laughs> a cat. Cat monument. Uh, this one is very nice. I guess there's one particular I love, but I, it's hard to find. Wait, this is ah, all, this here, one. all here together, right? Like, how cute ah. is this one? It was this girl who broke her arm, <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> remember, there was a day, it was a flood, so it was, she painted the flood, oh. so the water is there, and then that was the time when I had my arm broke. It's so nice. And it's not the first workshop that you organize, because you do a lot of, I don't know if it's correct to call them protest workshop, so maybe it's yeah. not the key the case, but the workshop is part of your activity as well. Yeah, every time I do a, a project in a museum or a biennial or a, sometimes even I was, I did it in schools. I do these workshop projects where, also because of, I found one, a picture of my dad doing protest with kids in the 70s. Oh. 
And then it was part of the research I've been doing for La Estrategia. And then it was like, I should maybe start. That was my training, actually. I should, if I'm going to do all, going to be working about this reenactment, I'm going to reenact this kid's protest. So I, I was invited by the MacVal to make a workshop with kids, and I did this protest workshop. And then since then, so it's been 10 years. Every time I can, I do it. So I've done it in, I don't know, in Phoenix, in Cotonou, in Douala, in Paris, in Kiev, and... They all, kids all have different, they own, they, my father at the time, they tell them what to protest about, like we workers need, and so I was kind of changed the, the, that thing on the, on the workshop, and I, I, we tried, to, the kids, they, they make their own slogans, so they come up with like, sleep more to be less tired, or less Mondays, more Sundays, or uh, no school, or I hate vegetables, or uh, more, oh, like in Cotonou, for example, this, like, all the girls should go to school, because it's not the case, so. It was every, every country and every city has its specificity. It's specific. Um, so as we, yeah, we probably, yeah. before we open up to the floor, uh, um, we have uh, maybe one or two more examples. Um, I like, because we're talking about kids, and there is this uh, notion that you use that is the ternura radical, yeah. that is the radical tenderness. Uh, and I guess it's very nice because it's uh, actually going with the fiction that we were mm, mentioning before mm. Um. Uh, mm, yeah I will I through the struggle of my parents uh, political life mm. <laughs> uh, mm, I also it was like a, I guess I learned it's something we learned in the family it was um, we, we were very sweet I would mm. say yeah, in the family and kind um, but there was always this thing of uh, what, what if we kind of imagine uh, what, what could be a tender policy? What could be tender, say, tenderness in terms of economics? Mm. Or like this idea of taking care of the other or uh, like treat the other gently and, and, also, and also what it could be a, a tender criticism mm. that kind of not always goes in front of confrontation but creates a di dialogue and so... Soft power. I don't, I don't know. No, I think soft power is weird. Uh, mm. because soft power could be mean like the opposite at the mm. same time. Yeah. No, this idea of to be tender and yeah. to be like iconoclast, uh, to be a, uh, how do you say, like rebel in a mm. way, but uh, avoiding the whole kind of war uh, inside your heart and then outside too. Uh, so it's about transformation, so let's make this transformation but without like violence, for example. Um, even if sometimes some gestures are violent or like are kind of aggressions like this one, uh, it ends up being kind of nice. <laughs> mm. This is the statue I cut in pieces of Christ, uh, it is not, this is George Washington statue in, in Wall Street. I didn't talk the real one, I wish. Um, uh, I make a reproduction at scale. But it was, this show was in New York some months ago. And then I had this idea of uh, propose in this show, I made some proposals about like, what could we do with these objects? It's not after they get removed. So maybe give them a better use as planters or um, to make grow nature around it. At the end of the day, it's what's gonna happen, no? After we all die, it's gonna be like that. Um, also, funny fact, it was also made this series of drawings where like corrupt politicians slipper in their shower. So is there like the whole show was about these fantasies of like corrupt and dictators slipper in their shower and die alone? And you told me that you didn't use the head of George Washington. I mean, it's no, the only part of the body that you I didn't took the nose. The no, you <laughs> Just the nose. The and nose. it's somewhere around. You see, there is little pieces of fingers and so nose. On, yeah, oh yeah, on the right side there is a fingers, and and there is all they all use as pot, right? I mean, there is flowers. Yeah. Um, now I'm working in a different right. version, another work that's going to be shown in Madrid. But it's kind of different now. The kind of the nature is more important than the object, uh, let's say. So and it's about a Columbus also object, but it's a spaceship that is was sent into space by the European um, ag space agency, mm -hmm. and they sent it in 2008, and it's called Columbus. And I f it's made me laugh also this all this idea of the conquest of the space and. This the same like language, mm. so but this is gonna be something different. Yeah. I guess that we can so with this yeah. bouquet bouquet of flowers, which is tender and political as well. We can maybe ask you if there is any mm -hmm. question comments. 
critics as well. I mean, we touch many topics, um, and we'd be we'd be glad to. Even I'm, yeah. I'm sure we'd be glad to answer your question. You can ask in Italian as well, or in French as well, or in Spanish as well. Mm. <laughs> Italian, Italian, for instance. There is a mic. Yeah. Is there a mic? No. Yell it. Yell it. Yell it. Thank you. That follows all your uh, work about monuments in general and public space, but obviously you use the mirror, which is also a, a very art uh, precise reference to like Dan Graham or Smithson mm -hmm. that in somehow are talking about monuments and are monuments. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you address too? Um. I, I always feel attracted not only by because of yeah I mean the Dan Graham for example the the, the work I was was most amazed when I was 19 years old it was this present continuous past by Dan Graham is this um, room where there is all mirrors around and you have the camera with a delay and then there is a delay inside the screen and a delay that goes into a delay and the delay um, so I was fascinated by that and then I've always been fascinated also even if uh, it's not clear in my work but like minimal art for example. But I cannot. I don't feel I have the same background as them. Uh, um, I don't feel I was. I mean, I. For example, I. Uh, I feel very. Uh, how you say? Uh, amazed and attracted by the forms, by the ideas behind. But I have. Uh, I feel responsible, or I think it's weird for me to avoid some social context. So I guess I sometimes I use these forms. For example, there is a series of work that is called Here Eating Dirt Mom, which is a series of bricks, like bricks, normal brick, clay bricks, which I buy, it's like a 1,300. So it's like a floor piece, which I cover the whole space with these bricks. And it looks pretty much like a very minimal installation, a uh, very uh, uh, kind of Carl Andre sort of kind mm. of thing. But it's kind of out of a completely different feeling uh, and it's not pretty much related. It, it is a kind of wink to the art history, but it's uh, like this fact of every brick is bite and has a mark of a trace of a bite and I was eating dirt for a month. And then also it's inspired in the work that was being done by my family in some neighborhoods where actually you collect bricks inside your house until you get enough bricks to make a new wall and then when you make a new wall you start collecting again and then the houses are full of bricks and then you, you can put them outside because the neighbors will take them. So it was kind of a comment on that. So I, yes, I'm sort of like, for example, I'm a huge uh, groupie of, let's say, Bruce Norman. But I guess uh, the, the, the political and the social background are so different of when I lived and then what like, I'm interested in. So I guess I sometimes I borrow, I steal these forms and kind of use them in a in another kind of social context. Mm. Well, no, no, I don't think so. Uh, I don't. I don't feel they have to be more political. They were. I mean, they they did what they could. <laughs> no, in a good way. In a good way. And I mean, in a good way. And they did what. I mean, they, they were the best. I mean, it's not. I'm not. I'm never like against any kind of art. I always. I try to have this position. It's like it's very generous to be an artist. It's very generous because you, you put you 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 put yourself in a fragile position. You do a lot. You work a lot. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's not hard. Most of times it's hard. Uh, so I cannot say to people you should do, do this in another way. So I respect uh, like my colleagues a lot, really a lot. And uh, but then I consider some like for example this American art sometimes lacks of this context of social. Uh, and political, and I understand why also because it was the, in the U.S. in a new economy that's was growing up, and then I guess everybody makes the contribution they can. It's more this way that I. I 
moi, je peux demander en français parce que l'anglais, c'est plus compliqué. Non, pardon. Non, moi, toujours à propos des monuments et des, et des références, moi, j'ai pensé au socle du monde des Manzoni. Oui, Quand oui. j'ai vu les enfants qui pouvaient <rire> animer, alors c'est très différent. Comme, mais j'ai pensé, en fait, que c'était euh, l'effet du socle. Et puis après, on devient, enfin, on, on mm. est un monument. Euh, alors, je voulais savoir en quel rapport... Je sais bien uh, que ça tout un autre, uh, mais... Uh, no, it has totally to do. I mean, I uh, think we're all, uh, we're a bunch of, like I'm a younger generation of artists who has been thinking about the, those issues, not only about, the, um, I mean, the value itself, the, the value itself of, of work. No, I, uh, that work is also about like what it's supposed to be on, on top of a plinth and then reverse it kind of makes it a more, it's kind of a mirror, it's a mirror thing. Uh, I do, it's also like it's the whole context that should be on top of this and then he placed all ourselves and kind of reversed the, so it's totally, yeah, and, and, and then it was, for, of, for sure it was part of like, for example, the things I was very into when I got to Paris in, in school. Uh, also when I was in Colombia, I was very a lot into uh, Dadaist and this idea of creating a new, yeah, uh, and, and yeah, and situationist, and yeah. And I made so many things uh, like that were not art or artsy like with my friends, with the setters group. We lived in the library most of the times. We were, and we passed secret messages through books. We uh, had like coded things to like, we made, left notes inside a book so the other can discover it and wrote kind of sort of poetry out of that. But it was with no intention more than having fun and being this kind of dandies at the library. Uh, can you come come back a bit uh, on the fact that uh, for the Mondrian piece or Gallieni, you use an illusion, and for me, uh, it's a way for underlining a moral position, let's say, but uh, in a very particular context, that is the context of fake news today. Mm -hmm. And I think you have a you have a strong relationship to this, but you twisted. So could you come back on mm. this uh, perspective, I, uh, please? When I was working, so when, while the period of thinking with Francoise and Pablo about this project, um, I was thinking about how we could contribute from our side. So I'm, I don't do these interventions, I do films. Uh, Pablo, is a, he works in the news, he's a newspaper, like he writes in the newspapers and in tele he says, speaks in the television. And Francoise is like a militant and activist and she has to, so I was like, I'm not gonna put Pablo to make an uh, intervention or to uh, Francoise to just climb up the statue. Uh, <laughs> um, so everybody, I was like, let's create a system where everybody contributes into a thing. Mm. And then uh, I, for instance, in this, there is a big difference in like, in the, let's say the strategy of these two works, but the, the Gallieni one, uh, I was very uh, kind of, pretty disappointed of the idea of making an intervention, taking some pictures and run away saying like, yeah, we did it. Uh, and sort of, and, and keep it in like a small sphere. And I, because I think it's a public debate and that needs to be, and it needs to be a talk and take place. So I was like, okay, if we contribute from our sides, we can make kind of out of this, this public debate and then kind of put a little bit of pressure. It's not huge pressure, but Maybe if it, I don't know, if things happen, this could put pressure so the statue gets for real removed. Um, when I actually, when I was uh, in, in I, when I was shooting, the poli ne police never came, so I did the shooting three times, and then the military was there, where they're just doing nothing. Uh, and then I say to myself, I can really steal it. But then I also talk, it's not my responsibility and it's not my decision. I think it should be like the responsibility of the city. So that's why also I continue with the project and, and the idea of um, using this kind of fake news, I prefer to call it anticipation, but I can call it also fake news, to use it as a brush in a way to, for, to do a work, an artwork was kind of um, interesting to me also like, um, most of these times, like in Colombia, we had so much uh, fake news from the extreme right wing. Uh, like when we had the peace agreement, they w we had like this referendum and people were asked to vote if they wanted peace or continuing the war. And the people, the war won. 
because there was all this misinformation. I like, if you vote uh, for the peace, your kids are gonna become gay. Or uh, they really, they made the, all this bullshit and then, then it, they covered all the media with these, these like, lies and it was like, why don't we use the, from the criticism this tool to kind of shake them a little bit? Uh, so that's one, one of the reasons I, and it's controversial. I like, uh, for example, inside our field, like uh, some boy who works with uh, Francoise and he was, uh, I mean, he loved the intervention and then we became friends also and we kind of started working on some other things. But he was like, yeah, when maybe the with fake news was not as good. Maybe it would be better if we share it through another like networks, like the networks as they have. Mm. I think it was interesting. I mean, of course, I, I, it's very new, so I don't, time would say, but uh, I think for me it was interesting to, to give it a try and then, and also because we wanted to, I, I hope it was bigger, the noise that made. It made a big noise until it got to the city hall, but actually it goes so fast in these news and Twitter things that it, it, it hard, it, it, it lasts. Mm. But I guess it's a term also of continuing, no? Yeah. And also <laughs> like looking for strategies all the time. It's not, there's not the good one and the better one. It's just like a bunch of things to try. Can I just add a short comment be yeah. before? We uh, close. Uh, I think that uh, it's a way of dismissing. I mean, considering this as a fake news, it's also a way of dismissing the point because here it's not a hoax. You know, it's like a you're creating like the next generation of mm. monuments, which is the future of monuments, not just the past of the monuments. Mm. But I think that this video opens up for uh, I mean, what the monuments will be uh, in the future. So it's much, it's the fiction more than the fake news that that mm. is prominent. Here. Yeah, and I think the m I mean maybe in ten five ten years. This video is gonna be shot for real, and it's gonna be as boring as the one I made. Just like some guys working, attaching a statue, and that, take it off. <laughs> but it's not. F <laughs> thank you, thank you everybody for thank being you. here. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Ivan. Thank you. We didn't talk about pigeon, next time. Give you an image of the pigeon grazie ancora, seducing uh, Napoleon. Ivan Argote, grazie a Riccardo <laughs> Venturi. E, 